landmines and jellyfish. Welcome back to Knives, I guess, and I still can't find anyone that will take me to Funky Town. I've never been there before. I'm intrigued. So anyways, it's Fixed Blade Friday, and me being me, I gotta do something kind of goofy, and it's gotta come with an overly long story, so here we are. Buckle your underwear. Um, and this kind of goes back to, you know, me talking about my uncle all the time from, you know, back when I was a kid. You know, I'd, I'd be at his place, and I'd see all kinds of pocket knives and stuff laying around. You know, me being that age, I wasn't necessarily enticed by all the Gerbers and Kershaws and stuff like that that just looked like boring knives. Um, it was always the Bud K grade stuff, the Frost Cutlery, you know, all that kinds of stuff. And, uh, you know, that's kind of neither here nor there, but, you know, that's that's where I really started getting into knives. And uh, he, the kind of guy he was, he had a small blacksmithing shop in his yard. He had a small foundry for sand casting, aluminum, bronze. Um, he did the casting and the work on his own wedding rings for his second wedding. Um, one of the sheds in the yard had a, a small machine shop in it, and I mean, there was a metal lathe, there was a, a mill, drill press, all that. One of the guest bedrooms in his trailer had another metal lathe and a drill press and a couple pieces of gear. <laughs> the living room, there was just a, a factory assembly line for, uh, reloading equipment, and, uh, so that's the kind of stuff he did, and, you know, I'd be over there playing around when I was a kid, and he'd be doing all kinds of fun stuff, and he had the blacksmithing shop, and we went out there one night, and he kind of introduced me to some of the basics, and then years later, when I could finally buy my own equipment and I had more time, you know, I brought his anvil home And I think, 2013, 2014. He passed away in 07. And that thing sat in the elements for that many years, so it took about 13 hours of sanding to clean that up. But I got it cleaned up, and I bought a forge. And it's a small knife maker's forge. And when you're going to go into stuff like that, don't immediately jump to, I'm going to make knives. And if you do jump to that, don't immediately go, I'm going to make giant knives, because there's some serious problems. I violated both of those rules, and uh, the end result is this on my sixth or seventh knife. I can't go any higher than that. We went over that last time, guys. Come on. But I go to the junkyard, and I says to myself, knives, I guess, some cheap steel will be leaf springs. So these came off a Chevy S10, and uh, so I get out there, I get everything cut to rough size, get it heated up, do all the forging, squishing the steel, all that, and it came time for the heat treatment, and that's where I hadn't learned enough yet. I didn't know you needed to move that and get the heat spread evenly, I just thought, red is red, it's good. So I just left it in one spot until the whole thing heated up, and one area was basically bright yellow while the rest was just the red that it needed to be. So I jam it in a bucket of unpreheated canola oil to quench it. And, uh, you know, I didn't see any problems. Did all the grinding, did everything else. Got the, the handle made, which, by the way, I'm actually proud of this. This is the skin from a bowling ball. I cut out the skin of a bowling ball, flattened it, and mounted it. And uh, it's kind of hard to see on camera, but it's very highly pearlescent and somewhat translucent. You can see the silver of the tang under here a little bit. But... I just thought this was really cool. I haven't been able to replicate it except one other time, and that knife went to a friend of mine because it actually came out good, and it was a normal size knife. But, so I had this thing, and I built this like a tank. It was going to be kind of like a, you know, a, 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 I don't know, a smash up of an axe and a machete. You know, just one of those things where you could just basically cut a boat in half if you wanted to. But because of that bad heat treatment, um, let's see if you can see it. There's the first fracture right there that I found once it started to oxidize. And, uh, the fractures turned into a lightning bolt of fractures in the steel, and they're kind of all over the place. And it's a good thing I didn't take it out into the woods and play with it, because that would have snapped the blade, and sharp pieces would have gone everywhere. But, uh, you know, it sucks, but at least I made a cool-looking thing. And, uh, you know, I, I know that I did this. If I would have gotten the heat treatment right, this would have been amazing. And it's very rough around the edges, but again, for like a sixth knife it's not bad i just jacked the heat treatment up but this is a big old fixed blade it is friday so thank you for looking at my crap guys um i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you enjoyed kind of the story behind all this um and all that being said thanks for watching thanks for the subscribers the new guys and the old ones if you haven't subscribed please do we're trying to hit a thousand and we're slowly getting there uh thank you for the comments they make this better for me and all that being said y'all have a nice day